next four gates of Gibura are a linear gate, two triangular gates, and a quadrangular gate. The linear gate is the path of Yod, the path of Virgo. Okay. Now, the relationship between Tiferet, Gedula, and Gebura is a direct reflection of the relationship between Kether, Chokma, and Bina. So, this path of Virgo, Yod, uh, is a reflection of the path of Tav between Kether and Bina. Okay? So, huh? Okay. Now, that path of Vav was the I saying, I am that. I am that. I am that. The I am taking concrete form, as it were. The path of Virgo is the solitary self saying, I am that. Okay? The solitary self <sighs> perceives itself in Gedula, its essential meaning is collectivized awareness, okay? But that takes expression, just like essential meaning takes expression through form, that collectivized awareness takes expression through the, the uniqueness of the solitary self. That is the expression, the solitary self's expression of the collective awareness is in its own uniqueness. And this is what this path of Virgo is. It's the, the harvest of the solitary self is in its uniqueness, the unique power, its unique gift that it gives to the collective. <clears throat> It's its power within the collective uh, <clears throat> crystallized into form as the solitary self. Okay. So <clears throat> the universal <clears throat> experience of this path, of this gate, this first gate here, is you know, as the collective of all of the solitary selves, the mass, great mass of solitary selves that is born from Bina, you know, forming the temporal realm, the realm of sequence, the differentiated realm, that whole body which expresses the whole of the I within this realm passes down this path of Virgo into the whole body of solitary selves realizing its own uniqueness. Every part of the solitary self is realizing its own uniqueness. And that comes, that uniqueness comes from each of those solitary selves. All of it expresses the I. And then we pass back up and return to Tiferet. And the pure body of I just newly differentiated. Now, uh, from that experience, uh, we learn uh, 
about the connection between that pure state of solitary selves, that newly differentiated awarenesses, those infinite number of reflections, we learn about that relationship between that level of solitary self and the most concrete level of solitary self. We see how they are connected and how one automatically leads to the next. It's clearly a process of self-realization, of clarification of self. So we learn that relationship through this gate. Now, from the personal perspective, we start in Tiferet. As our core individual solitary self, the very essential individualized self, our own little reflection of the I, our own little grouping of uh, essential meaning that we express in this infinite ocean of other I that is doing exactly the same thing. Now we pass down this path of Virgo. It's a refining, a harvesting of the maturing fruit of our individual self and we end in Kebura in the full fruiting of our individual our individuality the full maturing of that little bit of essential meaning that we express as a reflection of the eye. It is now mature in Gebura, clearly defined, clearly known for what it is and its place in the grand collective of awareness. And then we pass back up along the path of Virgo to Tiferet. <clears throat> now the letter Yod means finger, specifically the forefinger, and it's always pointing. I am that, okay? And that's what this gate is all about learning about that evolution in the self-realization of my awareness and, and truly defining it now in Gebura. It's crystal clear what I am in Gebura. And the source is Tiferet. <clears throat> so we learn that connection and we strengthen that sourcing in our exercising of our own unique power. Okay? <clears throat> now, the second gate is the first of the triangle. And it's again from Tiferet down that path of Virgo to Gebura, then up that path of Daleth to Bina, and then down that path of Cancer to Tiferet, and then back around. So, from a universal perspective, we start in Tiferet. As that infinite body 
of solitary selves all joined together and we pass down the path of Virgo, that refining path of earth to Gabura, where we are. The mature, solitary cells, that whole body of solitary cells is now mature, ripened, ready for the next stage in development. And we pass back up into Bina, the source of all those differentiated forms. We return to an undifferentiated state where all we let go of the rigidity of form to back to the infinite variety and ever-changing form. And then we pass down that birth canal, giving birth once again to the whole body of solitary cells and the temporal differentiated universe. We pass down through the Akasha and cause the whole cosmos. And we pass back up to Bina, that undifferentiated form, and then back down to Gebura, in the fully differentiated individual solitary cells as a whole. And then we pass back up to the more pristine state of solitary cells. So we're putting this movement into greater maturity in context with Bina around to Tifrat, this whole relationship with the Great Mother, the source of everything that's happening here. Okay. <clears throat> now, from a personal perspective, we start as our core our depth point, our solitary self in context with all of the other that make up the cosmos and we pass down to our ripest version in Gavura, our most clarified state of the solitary self and then we pass up into our greater self and we see the solitary self that has, has so strongly our imprint in it we are our greater self and then we pass down to our solitary self the raw core pristine, solitary self. That movement through the Akasha, creating this solitary self. We pass up to Bina, our greater self, move down and press ever so strongly upon our solitary self, the mature, Define solitary self and pass back up to the pristine solitary self. Okay, so through this gate we learn some interesting things about the solitary self and the different perspectives that are within the solitary self. Just like Hakma and Bina are different perspectives within the eye. 
here get Jula, the collective, and Gibura, the truly solitary self, are within the pristine solitary self. Okay? So it's a multifaceted being here, the solitary self. So we learn that from the circulation through the greater self and the part that it play, its causal role in both these aspects of the solitary self. Okay, <clears throat> so the third gate is our quadrangle. Now, <clears throat> this again comes from Tiferet, passes down the path of Virgo to Gebura, up the path of Daleth into B Bina, up the path of Vav into Kether, and then down the path of Beth into Tiferet, okay? And then, of course, back up and around to Tiferet once again. <clears throat> So, from the universal perspective, we start again as the whole cosmos, really that whole body of solitary selves, the whole infinite body of solitary selves that expresses the whole body of the eye. Okay. So, the eye is here as the solitary selves. And it passes down to the matured aspect of the solitary selves, the most concrete aspect of the solitary selves in Gebura, okay? The most differentiated. Yet it is the whole body that is differentiated in all of its parts here in Gebura. And then we pass up into Bina, the whole body of solitary cells becomes all the whole body of greater cells, the whole body of undifferentiated form, the that that I am. And then we pass up the path Evolve oh, into Kether, the infinite, undifferentiated, infinitely simple I. And then we descend down the path of Beth, of Saturn, down into the temporal, differentiated realm, we make that massive transition into the whole body of solitary selves. All these infinite number of reflections of the eye, the whole body of the eye in reflection. And then we pass up, return to the simplicity of the eye and pass down to the infinite complexity of forms and their perfection as we pass, da pass down the path of all perfection of form. And then we pass down the daylight, the doorway of Mars into Gavura and all those forms take form now as this infinite number of solitary cells crystallize in their perfection. And then we pass up the path of Virgo, returning to Tiferet, the pristine body 
of solitary cells. So, uh, the two most important aspects of this gate are that path, the passage along the path of Vav between Bina and Kether which is a reflection of that path of Virgo between Gebura and Tiferet. It's the same process, but on a different scale, on a different level. Okay, so we learn from that how the higher path is reflected in the lower path and how these are universal movements through consciousness, through the body of the eye. The eye moves through itself in these ways. And, you know, our <laughs> awareness is this movement. We partake in this movement. And then the next important is this descent into Tiferet from Cather. Uh, again, it just increases our understanding of the, that relationship between Cather and Tiferet. It strengthens that bond in new ways and puts it all in this new context. Okay? So, <clears throat> the personal uh, is very much the same. We start in Tiferet as our individual solitary self and we refine through this path of uh, uh, Virgo and enter into Gebura our most crystallized uh, individualized uh, solitary self-awareness. Okay? Then we pass through that doorway of Mars and enter uh, our uh, 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 greater self in Bina. We become our greater self. We let go of that specific uh, <clears throat> part and reunite with the whole of our greater self. And then we pass up to Kether, the infinite simplicity of Kether, letting go of all identity of any kind. We just are the I. And then we descend down that path of Saturn back into our solitary self, our little reflection of the eye. Okay? And then we reverse back up to the eye, back down to Bina, back down to Gebura, and back to Tiferet. <sighs> Yeah, the, the, those two paths specifically of Vav and Beth change things. <laughs> they change your perspective on how things are connected and the importance of those connections. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the fourth gate, the second triangle, is uh, it starts from Tiferet, goes down the path of Virgo to Gebura, rises from there directly to Cather, and comes down Cather into Tiferet, and back around. And this is very simple and very straightforward. Uh, <clears throat> It sort of mirrors the, the similar gate that was formed with Gedula, 
Okay. So, from the universal perspective, we start as that body of solitary cells, infinite number of solitary cells. As a whole, we mature to the stage of Gibura, the ripeness of Gibura, the redness of Gibura. And then we rise along that hidden path directly and quickly up together. The infinite I, the infinite simplicity. And then we descend down that path of Saturn through the Akasha. And we are the cosmos. that infinite ocean of solitary cells reflecting the fullness of the eye. Now we ascend back up into that infinite simplicity of the pure, pristine eye. And then we descend down that hidden path all the way down into the crystallized body of solitary cells. And then we rise back up the path of Yod to Tiferet and the infinite body of reflection of the eye. So, uh, this brings Kether into the whole thing just so directly. This transition between Kether and uh, that crystallized uh, body of the solitary cells. That transition is just so extreme, really, the contrast between the I and uh, uh, the solidity, the, the seeming solidity, crystallization of the solitary cells in Gibura. They're sort of set in stone. Uh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> that whole dynamic, and then coming down into the whole body of the individual cells, it again puts us all in a new context, and we learn ever so much more about what that means and the implications of those connections. So, the personal is pretty much the same. Again, we just start in Tiferet as our depth point, as the purest form of our solitary self. Our, we recognize here, our, uh, our grouping of essential meanings that reflect the I, we come from here. And down this refining, refining journey of Virgo till we reach our full maturity of our form as a solitary self. The, our reflection is absolutely pure here in Gebura. Shines ever so brightly. And then we pass up the hidden path directly into Cather. Just shoof, immediately up to Cather and the eye. Infinite simplicity of the eye. And then we descend again by this path of Saturn pressing ourselves to this just 
our one little bit of essential meaning that fills our solitary self that shines so brightly in our solitary self amongst the infinite ocean of other solitary selves. Then we bounce back up together. And then back down. Whoa. Into the crystallized solitary self, the refined solitary self. And then back up to Tiferet. And the core solitary self. Again, it's that transition up to Kether that puts everything in this universal context for the, the personal self, the personal awareness. Yeah, what more can I say? It, uh, it takes your places. Okay, so that's it for this path and its gates. Next will be all of the gates that associate with the path of Aleph and that complete the Sephiroth Gebura. So, till then, bye bye.